Welcome back to the sixth episode of the Store Podcast. Today we're interviewing Scott Easter. Alright, so uh, we're going to be asking you some questions today. Alright. Yeah, so any of y'all got any questions? I got a question. What I do is a living, uh, I've been doing for 22 years now, is I am a uh, uh, casework subcontractor. So we uh, build cabinets and reception desks, stuff like this here, uh, for hospitals and schools. So there may even be some of our work in your school, I don't remember for sure. But uh, yeah, and so I'm in the, uh, I'm Vice President of Manufacturing and uh, Engineering. And so I manage the engineering department as well as the manufacturing operations there at uh, Steve Ward Associates in Nashville, Tennessee. Um, how, how do you get into a job like that? Just like, how do you uh, just decide that's what you're going to do? That's a great question. Um, well, actually, I grew up with my father running a boat manufacturing plant. So from the time I was kind of your age <laughs> to uh, uh, maybe eight years after college, I worked at the boat manufacturing plant. So I was, uh, I was brought into manufacturing at an early age and really loved it. And so when I went to school at Auburn University, War Eagle, uh, I... Uh, uh, got my degree in uh, uh, industrial operations management which is basically manufacturing and so when I came and so that from there after a while working at the boat factory out of college I uh, uh, got hired with Steve Ward and Associates to run their manufacturing operations. Did you uh, grow up here or did you grow up somewhere else in the US? Yeah I'm from here so uh, I grew up in I started first grade in Gallatin I lived a little bit before that in other places but so I've been around and went to uh, Gallatin High School, go Green Wave there, uh, and then went off to school at Auburn University. And, uh, and so from then came back to, to uh, Hendersonville, Tennessee after Auburn and have been here ever since. So it's been a long, long time here. First grade through being age 54. Um, when you were little, what did you want to become? Well, y'all probably don't know because y'all are young. I got a man named Jacques Cousteau, but he was an oceanographer. And he was on TV every Sunday night along with the uh, Mutual's Wild Kingdom, Mutual Omaha's Wild Kingdom. And so we, as a family, we used to always watch that. But we used to watch Jacques Cousteau out on the ships and discovering the oceans. And so I was pretty sure that's who I was going to be uh, for most of my life, probably until I got into college. Then I, uh, searching which college I wanted to go to and, and that. So, as a young kid, not a fireman, not a police officer, but an oceanographer. That's really cool. Yeah. Yep. And do you do any speaking, like anywhere else, like preaching or anything? Uh, well, I, I teach a Sunday school class for boys about your age, um, um, most every Sunday. And then uh, I do teach in a men's group every so often, uh, about the size of group that y'all were out there today. Um, as well, so yeah, I do some uh, some some teaching. Do you have a Bible verse that really translate into your life? Y yes, I do, and thank you for asking that. Uh, as I talked about out there, um, as far as I, I lived most of my Christian life, I've been a Christian since I was twelve, and uh, really uh, just trying to be a better Christian most of the time. And so it wasn't until about 10, 12 years ago where I really understood what the Holy Spirit meant. Uh, and that I didn't have to become better, I could seek the, the Holy Spirit to help me become uh, a person that, that uh, I knew God wanted me to be. And so that, that was greatly helpful. So the one that I, I, it's the simple one, but the one I tend to go to for that is uh, Romans 8, 6, which is the mind of a simple man 
is death, but the mind of the mind controlled by the Holy Spirit is life and peace. And just to expand on that a little bit, when he talks about the mind of a sinner is death, he's not talking about fall over dead death. He's just talking about while you're living here, it feels like you're dead for a lot of things, like for addiction to uh, you know alcohol abuse, just and drugs and and. Uh, Divorce and just bad relationships and all that come from a from a sinful mind when it's not controlled by the spirit. But if you if you change your life over to uh, something that's controlled by the spirit, uh, get away from the patterns of this world and be transformed by the spirit, you will find that uh, you will find life and peace. The peace that uh, Christians talk about a lot and people have a hard time finding that comes at the hands of the Holy Spirit. So. Um Obviously, we're younger and still growing up through life, and you've kind of been where we are right now. Do you have any life lessons you may have learned along the way that you'd like to share with us to help us? Yeah, I do. You know, uh, the story, how I'm going to say this, is that I heard that uh, Charles Stanley, which I don't know if you know him, but a famous preacher, he, he leaned over one time when he was listening to a, another preacher preach to his son and said, you know, he felt this, the preacher was struggling a little bit, and he reached over, leaned over to his son and said, hey, this guy, he's preaching, he just doesn't have a burden for what's on his heart and what he's talking about. And that really struck me. And I started thinking about um, what my burdens was uh, uh, in, in, the, in my faith. And it is uh, to reach a youth at a young age, all right, that they start living, uh, G having Jesus be the Lord of the life at a young age, not, say, 25, uh, such as me, uh, because there's a, there's a lot those are a lot of years that you miss living with the Spirit guiding you. Does that make sense? That Jesus Christ is Lord of life. So, I have a great burden to bring that message to youth, uh, and that they uh, they would make these transitions at a younger age. Uh, the the benefits will change who you are, who you marry, who your friends are, what your life is like. Will all be changed by uh, by just you know, finding what the Holy Spirit has for you. Uh, and to make Jesus the Lord of your life, not just your, your Savior. This is a random question, but whenever you were growing up in like high school, college, did you ever play any sports? Yes, uh, I love sports. Uh, thank you for asking that. Uh, I grew up as uh, from the time I was 8 to like 14 playing tennis uh, <laughs> competitively. And then uh, soccer came along, and in Gallatin, where I grew up, that was it was about... Uh, when I was leaving middle school when soccer started being played in this town and so I switched over to soccer predominantly and played that and played that all the way up through my 30s and 40s and coached a lot of soccer too along the way since then and so yep love love that do you have any role models growing up like people you wanted to become like I guess yeah that's a good question uh let's see growing up early on you know I was uh you know like I said, I was in tennis early on, so I had uh, I had like sports and and uh, idols like John McEnroe and those kind of things uh, back in the day. Jimmy Connors. I don't know if y'all are too young to know those guys, but those were my sports idols. And then uh, later on in, in life, uh, I guess once I uh, got married and things of that nature, I have one guy that really influenced me, and his name Alan Lagarde. I don't know if you're familiar with him or not, but. Uh, he was the first man I had been around in church that really lived the Christian walk. I could see his life was truly about others. He uh, lived in humility, and you know that was the first time I realized that there was a there was a life being lived that I was not living. And so Alan Lagarde, Lagarde to this day is, is still a, a very important man in my life. Uh, another one is Robert Lewis, who is the uh, founder of men's fraternity that I that I, a group that I am uh, he's a pastor and he has really really taught me how to be a man what a man is uh, and so I, uh, Robert Lewis would be another very mutual person, person in my life when did you meet Christ I met Christ uh, at First Baptist Church Gallatin when I was 12 years old uh, it's when I walked the aisle and um, uh, like I said, at 12 in, in Gallatin was when I met him. Uh, and it, it did change my life for, for a vast part, but at that point, I really didn't make him the Lord of my life. Yes, I was different and felt different, and I felt like I was more of a good person because of that. But until I really started making uh, 
Jesus the Lord of my life, not just the Savior of my life, um, did my life truly change uh, to where I um, felt Him move in my life. So where do you, where do you go to church? Uh, I've been a member of First Baptist, Baptist. Uh, Hendersonville uh, since 1990, I believe is the date that I've been a member there. Um, what is your favorite sport and song? Two sport and song. <laughs> yeah, my favorite sport, uh, especially to watch at these days, is uh, uh, soccer. But not just soccer; it's the English Premier League. I don't know if y'all are familiar with that, but uh, my favorite team is the Tottenham Hotspurs. Uh, go Spurs! Uh, but uh, so that's. That, but I love college football. Being obviously an Auburn graduate and, and NFL football, only because I play fantasy football. I don't know if any y'all play fantasy football, so yeah. Yeah. that forces me to watch the NFL. And so I, I do like my I do like my sports. Now my favorite song, sorry, um, I am I am a, I love music. So uh, my favorite song uh, is what is it? Billion by I'm trying to think of his name. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of the artist uh, right now. Oh well, can't think of the name of it. Uh, but you you probably hear, hear it a bunch on there. The other one I love is uh, uh, "Give Me Your Eyes So That I Can See." Uh, what is that by Rick? No, not by Rick. Some, something Barnes, I think. But anyway, so I don't have a I, I don't have a, a good title for you. <laughs> All right. You gotta ask the most for it. Sorry. It's like, what's your favorite food and family member? <laughs> okay. That's probably well, nothing on your. You have another one? Or you have another? What's your favorite color in TV show? <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite sports team? Spurs. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, you haven't been listening. So, Spurs, Auburn. Uh, I, I, my favorite sports team would be Auburn University in anything. And then uh, my second one would be probably the, uh, the Spurs. Of course, I'm a Titans fan. And, and go Greenway. So. You're not asking any more questions. So that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for tuning in to episode six. That's it.